Hi, so I'm Rob, and here we're going to look at a comparison between uh, Ebene and Hibernate's treatment of multiple features to uh, one to many's. So, we'll first of all, have a look at Hibernate here, and we've got a, a JPA query which has got a, a select from order and a left join fetch against order details, followed by a left join fetch against shipment. And both of these relationships are one to many. Where order status is new, order by ID. And um, we've got max results there of 10 as well. Uh, now it doesn't matter if this is off or not actually, for the next part, which is um, the SQL that that produces, which is if we can see here from order, uh, left outer join to the order detail, and left outer join to the shipment. Now, the issue here is that this is actually a SQL Cartesian product. So what that means is that for the number of rows we have in details, we're multiplying that by the number of rows we have in each shipment for a given order. So if we just have a look at some numbers here, if we have one order that has 10 details and five shipments, that would produce a total of 50 rows for our Cartesian product. And if we had uh, 100 details and five shipments, that would produce 500 rows. And the last one here, 100 details, 20 shipments, 2,000 rows. So this is 2,000 rows that would be used to build the one order object graph. And um, uh, with eBean, we can see over here that eBean will actually pr separate out that into a separate query and produce uh, either 15 rows or 105 rows or 120 rows. So that's the addition as opposed to the Cartesian product, which is the multiplication. Uh, so the issue here is that um, with even quite low cardinality, we've got quite a difference here, you know, sort of 50 versus 15. So it's almost a three times uh, difference. And then if we go up to these slightly larger numbers, you've got 2,000 versus 120. So the Cartesian product starts to be a significant uh, pain at this point. And to some extent, we can say that um, producing the Cartesian product makes this type of query virtually unusable. You have to have a very good knowledge of your cardinality, and your cardinality has to be very low um, to safely do this in a, in a sort of a production database. So EB never produces a SQL Cartesian product. Um, now the way that uh, we've got this here, so I'll just quickly go here. We've got this query for orders where order status is new and we're fetching the shipments and fetching the details. So this is the same query as we had before uh, with the JPA query. Uh, so eBean looks at the many paths, so it's one to many or many to many, and it goes, um, well, I've got one here and I've got a second one. And to avoid the Cartesian product, eBean detects, oh, I've got, I'm allowed to join the first one, but the second one I can't include. So I'll mark this particular fetch path, which is details, as a query join. And so eBean does this before it then executes. And so what that means is eBean will then split this query into two SQL select statements. And the second query becomes a sort of a find by foreign key. Uh, so it's fast. Uh, we'll have a quick look at that. So the first query here becomes select, and we've got T0 and T1 being the orders, and then the T1 is the shipments. So select from order, left join the shipments, where status is new. And then a second query fires, which is select from the details, where the order ID is in the various values. So this is in clause here. And that binds to the order IDs that came from the first query. Uh, now this query is pretty fast because order ID is a foreign key column and by default all the foreign key columns will have indexes on them. Now the other thing I've got here is this bind one for, this is an example uh, where if you like we had three orders so the bind values were one, four and five which were the order IDs but we pad that out to five so that we get less variation in the number of bind values in our in clause. Um, talked about this a little bit in a previous video.
but basically we pad this out so that we get a, a, a better hit ratio on prepared uh, query plans in the database. So um, let's, uh, let's have a look at that in code. So we want to run this query and I want to make a couple of variations on it. So we run this query and we're finding orders that are new and fetching shipments and details. If we have a look at the resulting log, we've got our first query which is for orders and then we've got a second query here which has got this plus query mode and that means that it's a query join for order details. And so um, if we looked across here we would see <coughs> our from order join shipment detail etc and then here we've got our, um, our bind values and we can see from order detail. So that was, you know, the queries as per the slide. Now, um, okay, so I'll show you something quickly here as well. Uh, when we have a look at the logs and we've got the summary logging on, you'll see the, the mode plus query. You'll also see this origin. So this is a secondary query and the origin query is up here. So this, this origin value is the same as that. And that's, that's, a way that eBean can link the two queries together for auto tuning and um, performance monitoring. Um, now, there's a couple of things here we want to do. So, if we swap the order around and did details first and then shipments, then the joins would be different. So, eBean basically joins to the first one it can it comes across in terms of a one to many or a many to many. Now, I just want to expand on that. So, if we've got um, customer maybe we fetch fetch customer as well and we've got customer contacts and we fetch that now here um, we're fetching customer and customer contacts now customer is a many to one but customer contacts is a one to many so it knows that this entire path here is um, has got a many in it so that means that these two queries will now be uh, separate. So um, let's also just uh, do something here. So we've got um, a customer, let's get an alias for customer and uh, just reduce this a little bit by only selecting the customer name and maybe maybe we'll just do the version as well. Okay, so let's run this query. So what eBean does is goes, oh, there's a path here which is a one-to-many in this customer contact. So I'll join to that and then I'll do separate queries for shipments and details. Let's run that. So if we scroll across here a little bit, we've got our single transaction spanning everything and we've got our original uh, query for order and then we've got a plus query for details and a plus query for shipments. And if we looked at the uh, SQL here, <coughs> we will see that <coughs> we've got a query for orders and then we've joined the customer and customer is a many to one and that's a, a mandatory uh, relationship. So that's a, a not null foreign key column if you like. So there's a, just a join, not an outer join there. And then we've got an outer join to the cardinality of one to many, which is the contact. So we've got the contact details here. So this is fetching orders uh, plus customer plus many contacts. And then if we looked at the other two queries, they would be similar to the query we had before where so let's just take one of them so this is the um, order detail <coughs> so we're doing select from order detail where the order ID is in some list of order ID values and so here we've got, uh, again, this is a query against order ID, which is a foreign key column. 
that'll have an index on it so this query will be fast because of that and here we've got the, the bind values and we've got the padding going on because we've only got three we're padding it up to five and this uh, in clause would then have either have one five ten twenty fifty or a hundred bind values based on um, this padding that's happening here okay so let's go back here and just do one more thing so what we've got is we've got uh, the query and Eben goes well I'm, I'm allowed to join one one to many so I choose the first one and that's customer contacts so the others become query joins now let's go set max rows 10 now once once you've got max rows in here eBean has the rule that it always supports first rows max rows in SQL so once it does that it then doesn't allow this join to occur because we need to do relational max rows um, so we can't include the one to many in that fetch so now eBean will fetch orders and it can also join to customer because that's not a one to many but now it goes can I join customer contacts no because I, I need to do this max rows so when we run that <coughs> we've got a different query here so we've got finding orders and then we've got a plus query for contact a plus query for order detail and a plus query for order shipment and these are all got the same origin point so what eBean's done now is it's gone okay let's let's have a look at that first SQL statement that paste it in here format that so now we have a select and we have from order join customer so eBean could do this and support the limit offset clause but it can't join the many's and so it had those as separate queries okay so let's uh, I guess go back here just confirm that we covered everything there so we've got our query to order joining customer and then we've got query joins for the other one to many relationships to contact order detail and order shipments so if we go back to our presentation now <coughs> so hibernate will produce a sql cartesian product uh, once you start joining multiple one to many's into a query uh, it also doesn't honor max rows so when you do that with the max rows it'll do client side paging and uh, you'll also get that warning uh, 104 first row first result max results specified with collection fetch applying in memory eBean is different and that it always honors first rows max rows first rows max rows in SQL and it does that because we want to optimize the query and we think max rows is important to optimize that uh, eBeam will never produce a Cartesian product so what it does is it um, instead breaks the query up um, into multiple SQL statements so this results in us getting efficient object graph construction uh, no matter what the fetch paths are specified uh, either manually or via auto-tune um, so um, uh, eBean does this by checking for first rows max rows and checking the one to many or many to many paths and then it will um, mark certain paths as being query joins automatically based on those rules and uh, we should just note that the secondary queries are always uh, fine by foreign keys so they're fast queries so although we've got now more SQL statements those SQL statements are individually fast okay and that's it